Hello and welcome to Eplay Machines Five Side Chats. Not as good as FDRs, but hey, it's something. Now, before I get into the, you know, stuff of the video, I think it's notable enough to give a bit of a thingy to one of the questions that were made in the Q and A that I held last week, because you know, like literally while I was recording the Q and A video one of the questions just were appeared so I didn't get to hear that see do that one in a video and you know let's just be fair I already commented an answer but you know let's just give them an answer okay this question is from sunflower socialist they said what is the po most pointless third party in US today now the thing is, I wouldn't necessarily give that to one particular party because that would just be like, I, like I'm not in the, I'm not a gatekeeper on who is the one worst third party in U.S. politics, but I guess it'd have to be parties that fall into three categories: one, third parties who do not participate in elections, such as the Pirate Party. Two, third parties that do not have any support, like the Socialist Equality Party. Three, parties that were made just to serve as an ego stroke slash ballot line, like the Women's Equality Party just being a Cuomo ballot line. And four, parties whose ideologies are done in a more successful manner by a bigger party. For example, why, like, if you're a Trotskyist or a communist, why support the Socialist Equality Party when the Party of Socialism and Liberation espouses the same ideology but gets 158.6% more than, of the vote than the SCP did? Because they get like 300 votes. Whereas the other party, whereas Party of Socialism and Liberation, they get a sizable amount of votes. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the news. First, we're going to go with boring news first, and then we're going to get to the big one. So first, boring one, Biden would consider Republican for VP, but I can't think of one right now. Former Vice President Joe Biden said that he would consider picking a Republican as his running mate in 2020, but the top-tier Democratic presidential candidate stopped short of naming which members of the other party he'd weigh in for the spot. Uh, why? No, seriously, why? Like, seriously, I, I don't get it. Why? Why would you, in any sense of the word, do that? Like, logistically, if the parties had set ideologies and actually had principles, you know, then you'd be like, why would you do this? But Biden has no set principles. Whoever gives him the most money, he's going to do the service of. He said it himself that he's willing to prostitute himself. So, this is probably just somebody who was giving him a little extra money, like, hey, your Republican would be better than you, so do that. Like, especially considering he already stated that he was going to be a one-term president if he gets elected. So, he's literally giving the next slot for a Republican. They might say, well, I mean, how do you know that the Republican's going to run? Dude, if you're the VP... And your president is relatively popular. Are you not going to use that popularity to push through? That's exactly what Joe Biden should have done in 2016. Because then he would have had somewhat of a chance. And also, nobody's saying, oh, but Biden's not a real Democrat because he's not going to do it. Like, like, they give that to Bernie, despite the fact that how many of Bernie's potential running mates are Democrats? Let's see. There's Nina Turner, Tulsi Gabbard, Elizabeth Warren, Rashida Tlaib, uh, Ro Khanna. Quite a few of them are Democrats. and I wouldn't say any of them are Republicans. Why? Because Bernie has a set of ideology and actually cares about the issues and will choose a like-minded VP Rather than just saying, oh, uh, 
this person might be somewhat... This might get me some brownie points by Republicans. Like, and also... <laughs> I guess Biden soured on Stacey Abrams because... I mean, originally it was Stacey Abrams he wanted to run as this VP. Now I guess he just doesn't like her and wants a Republican. Like, do you hate Stacey Abrams that much? Like, I mean, I get having some, like, qualms with her, but, like, do you hate her that much that you literally just were like, no, 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 I'd rather have a Republican than you. Like, dude, seriously? <sighs> Anyways. The next story is, Illinois just legalized marijuana. And right before they legalized marijuana, the governor pardoned 11,000 low-level marijuana convictions just right before the marijuana legalization law happened, which makes total sense. He, like, he, like, the governor, who is not that special, to be honest, but he's made it, he says it very clearly, quote, We are ending the 50-year-long war on cannabis. We are restoring rights to many tens of thousands of Illinoisians we are bringing regulation and safety to a previously unsafe and illegal market, and we are creating a new industry that puts equity at its very core. Like, he's pretty much clicking the restart button on Illinois and its marijuana issues. Like, he's clicking the restart button. Everything is fixed. Well, I mean, not everything is fixed, but, like, I mean, he's definitely go taking the right steps. <sighs> He's doing the right thing. And if any state fully wants to legalize marijuana, that should be the way they do it. And if when it, when it gets done on a federal level, it should be done that way as well. Everybody who's in jail for low-level marijuana crimes should be pardoned. If it's going to be legal, why do you need to have the people still be in jail? Sorry, I have... Stuff knows, I guess. <sighs> the next story is Warren announces support for new North American Trade Pact. Senator Elizabeth Warren said Friday that she supports President Trump's renegotiated version of the North American Free Trade Agreement, which passed the Democrat controlled House last month. Warren, a 2020 Democratic presidential candidate, told the Boston CBS affiliate WBZ that she would vote to approve the pact despite her past opposition to free trade agreements. The Senate is expected to approve Trump's proposal, called the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, as soon as this month. Warren said Friday that the updated version of the USMCA made improvements to the original NAFTA and Trump's first proposal. The White House agreed to bolster labor law enforcement provisions, scrap protections for high-cost prescription drugs, and tighten environmental regulations to win the overwhelmingly support of the Democratic House. Workers have the legs taken out from underneath them this agreement has in its improvements, Warren said Friday. It's going to help open up some markets for farmers. They need that stability, she said. It's going to help with the unenforceable label standards and is going to be useful. Huh. No, no. No, no. Like, I mean, just no. The, the thing about the USMCA is that the biggest criticism that has been levied against it is that yes, it does give that it gives labor negotiations it gives it, it get, just tighten a little bit of environmental regulations but it doesn't address the one issue it doesn't address the you know outsourcing of jobs it does not address that the idea is usually supposed to be like oh if workers are at the table then you know they can negotiate to not have their jobs shipped overseas but the thing is yeah, it would naturally, in a normal world, that would make sense. But, you know, when the people, like when bosses are tasked with, hmm, money? Or helping my workers? Money? Or helping my workers? Hmm. They're going to pick money. So, it doesn't actually address that problem which is the biggest problem that is with NAFTA 
Yeah, it's good that they would address climate change. But, you know, in this particular issue, it won't address the big thing. Which is strange because Trump ran on this whole protectionist trade. Like, oh, I'm a protectionist. I'm going to keep your jobs in the U.S. Blah, blah, blah. Like, he's... And the thing is, many people are speculating that he's going to run it on again again. He's going to point his finger at the House and say, like, see, this trade deal was bad. I tried to negotiate a good trade deal, but the Democrats, they were just like, no, we got to have this trade deal. And now Warren will have the finger pointed at her... Like, and it will lose her the election again. I say again because the Democrats are... If you support this trade deal, you've learned nothing. You've learned nothing if you support this trade deal. Like, the thing is, a lot of people, they just seem to forget that. That trade is the big issue that decided the election. And legitimately, nobody talks about it for some reason. Like, they think it was immigration. Like, immigrants voted in troves for Hillary Clinton or something. Like, it, 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 hope if it was one of those issues, then, like, why would Trump not focus on this? Like, this is a big one. Like, this is a big issue that, for some reason, nobody talks about and nobody addresses. Despite the fact that it literally is a deciding factor in a lot of elections, many people speculate that Reagan won because he had some protectionist Democrats in his group. I don't even know why, because I'm pretty sure Reagan was a full free trade guy, but I'm pretty, I think he was able to like make it seem like he would have helped the workers or whatever. Because for some reason, that's the thing that Republicans are so good at. Like... When Nixon, not Nixon, when Clinton tried to emulate Republicans, he emulated the wrong part. Republicans had two parts. The pro-corporatist, pro-business, blah, blah, blah. And the second thing was the populism that they were able to rile up in the people. For some reason, Clinton was like, no, the business part is going to be the one that's going to win us over. Not the populism. Mm -mm -mm. Like, he was the only... I mean, scratch that. Clinton knew that populism was going to work because Clinton acted like a populist. He acted like, oh, I'm just like you. I was the governor of a state. I I was a mayor. I I walked down the street and people were like... And I know people's names. I know people who were laid off their jobs. Like, the recession, it hurt a lot of people in my state and it hurt people. But then... He was like, he just turned his back and was like, yeah, but I'm going to make it worse. Good day. Like, I don't get it. It makes no sense. And again, this is an issue where Bernie's going to 100% pimp slap, I mean, pimp slap Warren, I guess, or bitch slap or whatever. Anyways, speaking of 2020 Democrats, Julian Castro drops out of presidential race. Cool. Like, I mean, like, everybody was making a big sad deal about this. Like, oh, Julian Castro, the only Latino candidate, has ended his field. The field is terrible because it's white. Oh, no. I'm Hispanic. And I don't give a shit about Julian Castro. Like, I don't care about Julian Castro. Like, oh, Hispanic... The Hispanic, the Hispanics are sad because Julian Castro dropped out. I don't care. Julian Castro was a corporatist. He was, he was one of like four candidates who was trying to do Obama again. I mean, five, six possibly. There were like six candidates, at most, six candidates that are trying to emulate Obama again. Like, we have Biden obviously being like, oh, Obama, all the good things that happened in the Obama administration, I was right there, and all the bad things, uh uh uh. 
Then there's Julian Castro, who was like, I'm doing the Obama better. Then we have Pete Buttigieg and Robert O'Rourke, who are like fighting with each other, like, I'm white Obama. No, I'm white Obama. Then there's Kamala, you know, being like, oh, I'm a progressive too, but also not. Like, the one who was obviously like, hope and change, psych, bro, JK, I got you. And then the other one was Cory Booker, who many people consider to be Diet Obama. Oh, no, wait, scratch that. If I remember correctly, I remember saying, like, in an original video, like, Deval Patrick was considered, like, a Diet Cory Booker. So, yeah, Deval Patrick, too. Like, seriously. A lot of people are, like, emulating this, like, Obama style of politics that nobody gives a shit about anymore. <sighs> So yeah, now that all the boring stories out of the way, this is the actual important one. We are about to go to war, possibly. Maybe. So, in the U.S.'s ever-pervading wisdom, we literally murdered the top general in Iran. Like, we took an airstrike at an airport and killed him. Why? Why? I don't fucking know. Well, I mean, I do know. You know, military-industrial complex, Israel, you know, pushing this war with Iran for a long time. That literally everybody keeps trying to push, even though Iran has literally done nothing to us. Except not give us their oil reserves. But, like, seriously. The thing is, Trump and everybody is in the media is, like, doing their old handbook, like, Oh, he's a bad person. Why are you saying he shouldn't have been killed? Blah, 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 blah. Look, I don't give a shit if he was a shitty person. There are shitty people all over the fucking planet. Does the U.S. have the right to just go in a country and just be like, chick, chick, bang, 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 dead. We killed someone we didn't like. Like, could you imagine what would happen right now if Iran felt threatened by John Bolton, and then sent a drone to kill John Bolton, like, the U.S. would be like, you can't do that, that's not allowed, that's an act of war, yet when the U.S. is doing it, Trump is like, oh no, I'm preventing war, like, what the fuck do you mean you're preventing war, you're preventing war as well as someone who's saying, Oh, I'm going to stop you from being an alcoholic and then gives you a fucking Jack Daniels. Like, you seriously, you're an incompetent f fucking moron. If you think that you are preventing war by murdering the top general in Iran. This is just, no. No. You don't do this. But the U.S. is the top superpower and the top military power in the world, so of course they're going to get away with this in some form or fashion. Either they'll somehow get in a war and win, with thousands of dead American children lining the path. Like, the, the, the thing about this stupid mentality of, like, the U.S. being the top power that is the world's police... Is we line the world with dead bodies. Like, seriously, for some reason, like, I mean, a lot of people on the ground, they get this. They get that we can't use our soldiers just for nonsense. Now, the one thing that is good is that a lot of people are 100% trying to prevent this from being the next Iraq and Afghanistan. Members of Congress are like, like, Ro Khanna and Bernie Sanders, they were rapid, and Tim Kaine are rapidly introducing measures to prevent the war from, the war from happening, and people are taking to the streets, protesting this obvious BS, you know, regime change war. Presidential candidates, like, jumped on the opportunity to criticize this. The first one actually at least to my knowledge, criticized Trump on this, was Marianne Williamson. You know, Bernie and Tulsi followed suit, but, 
you know, you know, Bernie was like, I mean, yeah, they, they were the ones who like Marianne was the first to do this, which I mean, makes sense. She has literally nothing to lose, but I mean, she, this is a big freaking deal. And of course, a lot of people on the internet have just taken to mockery because this is literally the only way they can cope with this. Because the people, they they know that this is nonsense and we can't just throw our soldiers literally everywhere. But the politicians, they don't give a shit. Because they don't have to fight in these wars. Like, I mean... There are quotes after quotes after quotes from, like, good politicians that explain the reason why this is nonsense. Like, George McGovern's quote of, like, I live... Like, he said something about, like, I hate the fact that old men are sending our young boys to go and die. Like, seriously. Like, I think, I don't... Like, Marco Rubio, he's like, oh, yeah, we we need to go kill this bastard it's like but he's not gonna be going to war to kill the bastard like he ain't like I mean when wars were justified some members of congress would literally resign like world war 2 Lyndon B. Johnson he resigned from his position in the house to go serve in the war and Tulsi Gabbard, she resigned from her position in her in the Hawaii State House or whatever position she had before she became before she was a soldier and went to go serve in Iraq. I mean Iraq was not justified, but Tulsi felt it was justified when it happened. But seriously, this is just I don't like the fact that I can get this and for some reason like People that are journalists pretend not to get it. It's like nonsense. So, anyways, in a let's make let's make things fun. Let's make things fun and talk about Crumpkin twenty twenty, the fun presidential candidate. He's eighty percent more fun than his competitors. Twenty fifty, here we come. He's like I'm gonna get his. Like, he's running under the Triceratops Party. The fun party, Triceratops. Here's his platform. Have a fun party. Calm, quiet, and relaxing with beer, weed, and barbecue. 28 hour work week at 38.50 an hour, so everyone can have a meaningful input and feel good about themselves now and in the, f- in the future. We could get our nations in eight years so we could turn America, F yeah, better to on. Spend work together and basically it's just a nonsense presidential campaign but he's fun so cool anyways now I guess I'm gonna have to go to the main topic of this video which I'm kind of haphazardly putting together so here's what I'm gonna do plans for 2020 both for this channel and just what we need to do for 2020. For starters, I'm just get the basic one out of the way. Vote. I know there's a lot of people who poo-poo voting. Like, no, voting is not going to get anything done. Blah, 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 blah. But we need to vote. Voting is, like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, oh, voting is your civic duty. But, yeah, I'd argue voting is really important. No, I know, I know it's not the best sometimes, you know, because I acknowledge that there are people who rig elections. I acknowledge that it happens. Demi Wasserman Schultz, Hillary Clinton, um, Brian Kemp. Like, I acknowledge that people, that our elections aren't 100% like safe. And they'll go through a lot of processes to make sure that the election isn't, you know, the best. But voting is the best mechanism we have in a lot of efforts to fix how our country's policies will go. 
and not just for the presidency, even though the presidency is important, he will, the presidency will lead how the whole policy of the country will go, but then there'll be, you know, the House and the Senate, you know, even though I'm not really in the, in the crowd of like, oh, we have to vote Democrat, no, 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 no. I say vote progressive down the ballot. That may mean not voting for a Democrat and instead of voting for an independent or a third party candidate. But so be it. I think we should buckle down. Like this like this is the last election we can fix major issues like climate change. We need to get a progressive Congress and Senate and presidency that will fix these issues. So Best case scenario, a bunch of Bernie crats. Like, Polly Jean Swearingen. I, like, my endorsements list on the Wyoming website. Go there. Those are the people that I want to see in the next Congress. I want you guys to make it happen. And if you guys can, like, phone bank or donate money or whatever to these candidacies, go ahead. But simply your vote can be good enough. But I think it is necessary to vote. You should at the very least vote something. Vote your conscience. Vote to diminish the two-party system by voting for um, the third party. Vote however you feel you need to vote. Okay? Now, for some other plans for this channel, just basically for this channel, I'm going to try to go for a two-week schedule, like... One main series video every two weeks. Hopefully. Like, I'm going to try and do that. I, I, I think I could. It's, it's going to basically bundle down to like two vids a month. So I'm going to try and keep that schedule consistent. And I think by based on how many scripts I have, I can keep that schedule up for a while. I think it'll, I think it'll bode well. For my... I'm going to also try and make more appearances on other people's channels. Like, you can hit me up if you want me to be on your channel, whatever. But, I mean, I'm going to mostly try and focus on mine. Because I want this channel to be all good and cool. And, of course, this could be an election year where I get a bump. Like, because it's an election year, usually in election years, political channels like... Kyle Kalinske, TYT, and most of these other political channels, they usually get a bump in subs because people are going to want a, you know, consistent way to view the election, but not through the major party lens. So, I'm going to be a decent look because I'll also be talking about third parties and how they're doing in this election. They get their news, if, if, if a third party wants to come to me and be like, hey bro, you know, give me an interview or whatever, uh, I can try to make it happen, or I can cover like the Green Party primary or whatever, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna try, because I think it's worth trying, because these parties deserve to be mentioned too, yeah, I'm also gonna try to keep them... Um, the, you know, just try to keep some consistency and somehow uploads work. Like, I know I have done a, I haven't done a thoughts on podcast for a while. I'm going to try and get into that. I'm also going to try to do that whole thing where I said like two years ago, like, we're going to do a political movie review. Like, I'm going to try and do that. But I mean, scheduling-wise, I I think I'm going to try to just stick to my schedule of like, oh, post a podcast every week and post a main series video every two weeks. Because, yeah, I like it. Now, the main series videos, I'm going to also, I'm going to try and get through requests. Like, I mean, even though none of the videos, none of the scripts I've written so far are requests. I'm going to try and get through some requests by the end of the year. I think it, I think it, I think it should be, because, like, yeah, I like, I, I want to give the fans, like, something. Because, 
the fans are the ones who got me here, so I'm going to try and get them something. And the way to get them something is simple. Do vids they want to do. And, you know, doing a request is the way to do a vid that they want me to do. So, yeah, I think, honestly, this is going to be my shortest podcast because I can't really think of much else to say. So, yeah, I probably, I was I was trying, like, I just got busy and this is, this is going to be the worst episode of the year, probably, hopefully. I hope I don't get any worse than this. So, anyways, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when a future video of mine comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Quora, or check out my articles on the Independent Political Report.